So in this video we're looking at discharging the capacitor. So uh, let's draw a quick circuit uh, which we would use to charge the capacitor just for continuity. Uh, you need a resistor otherwise, actually you don't need a resistor because the resistance of the wires is often enough but you might get a lot of energy lost due to heat if, you're, um, if you don't have a resistor. But in any case you'd have a switch which is closed, okay already closed. When it closes it charges up and you get a voltage across as uh, charge builds up on the capacitor plates. So it's charging. So you're assuming you start off with a charge VC and then when you discharge you're going to have um, a circuit that's a little bit uh, more simple. It doesn't look simpler mentally because there's something missing which is um, your power supply but in this case your capacitor is the power supply and your resistor is the load, whatever the load is. So with the switch open, your maximum voltage VC across the capacitor is just sitting there with the charge built up on it, ready and waiting to go. So it was just trying to be consistent with the charge circuit. So this is discharging. And um, make a clear boundary between those two. Um, the, you close the switch, so that will be a complete circuit. And electrons are going to flow off the plate, so it's electrons and around the circuit and balance out the charge. Okay, so uh, same time constant applies, T equals R times C. And if you're looking at a graph of graph of VC, the voltage across the capacitor, against time, it has to start off with its maximum value at the start, um, and it's going to rapidly decrease. Boom, until it doesn't actually hit zero, it just keeps trickling away. But after several time constants, we consider it to be effectively zero. So there's time zero, and then we've got capacitance uh, voltage zero. 63%, um, so that delta V is, uh, after one time constant, is 63% drop. So you're left with 0.3. 7 of the original voltage across the capacitor VC. Then after another time constant it will be 37% uh, which is the converse, so another 63% drop, so 37% of this this value so, and so forth. Okay, um, once again uh, going back to our formula for the time constant, the larger the resistance the longer the time it's going to take, the larger the capacitor, the longer the time it's going to take. Larger resistance will take longer because it means less current um, less current can flow uh, for, from the capacitor and larger capacitor means it's going to take longer to empty the bucket as we were talking about before. Um, one more graph we can quickly draw which would be the current, there's a lot of graphs we could draw, we could draw the, the voltage across the resistor against time which would look very similar um, to this, in fact it would look exactly the same as, as your capacitance against time because there's nothing else in the circuit so the voltage across the capacitor has to be the voltage across the resistor. We can look at the current against time, once again it starts off at zero, as soon as that switch closes, boom it hits maximum, it's meant to be a, a very rapid increase, um, almost instantaneous increase but I can't show that on my little quick sketch here, and then the current will drop off again in that same 63% um, of the maximum down to 63% um, drop, 37% remaining of the maximum current uh, in one time constant, tau, Greek letter T tau, um, and uh, just in case you're wondering why 63%, because a lot of people ask that, where does that come from? And it's something to do with the logs and the log scale and um, how that works. It relates to half on a log scale or something like that. I don't know exactly, but that's I haven't. That's what I've been told, and I had it explained to me in a lot of detail once before. Um, but so I know roughly where it is if if, if it's niggling enough to go find out. Um, but that's you can pursue that further if you want to know more. And that's discharging a capacitor. Uh, we should also say if the resistance is very low, it'll discharge almost instantaneously. That means the current's going to be quite high. And that's V equals I times R to find out. Uh, I equals V over R, in fact. V being the voltage across the capacitor, resistance being practically zero. And that means the current I is going to be maximum, which is going back to that again. But, yeah. So the maximum is determined by the resistance. Anyway, that's enough.